ice in my veins i've been driving this train years in this lane there's no stop in this flame because i came to the game and i changed it to play how i like rearranged it to my own domain yeah i got what it takes made lots of mistakes taking shots skipping breaks feeling lost feeling great popping off singing straight never stop never changed all the squad here to play and i've got something to say yeah i work hard each and every day i get lost in the words i say i don't push pause no i push play i won't stop till i make a change i withdraw on the things i make i turn flaws into flawless traits i build tall never cap in space i won't stop till i hear him say And I'm up again. I got tired eyes, need a cup of blend. That's right. In the AM, that's my only friend. No light, just the sun coming up on the horizon. I lose track of time. Yeah, I move fast and climb. A new class divine. Yeah, true passion shines. And I'm through passing time. I choose stacking dimes. You snooze half the time while I move passing by. Uh. I work hard each and every day. I get lost in the words I say. I don't push pause, no, I push play. I won't stop till I make a change. I withdraw on the things I make. I turn flaws into flawless traits. I build tall, never cap in space. I won't stop till I hear him say. in my veins i've been driving this train years in this lane there's no stop in this flame because i came to the game and i changed it to play how i like rearranged it to my own domain yeah i got what it takes made lots of mistakes taking shots skipping breaks feeling lost feeling great popping off singing straight never stop never changed all the squad here to play and i've got something to say yeah i work hard each and every day i get lost in the words i say I don't push pause, no, I push play. I won't stop till I make a change. I withdraw on the things I make. I turn flaws into flawless traits. I build tall, never cap in space. I won't stop till I hear him say. And I'm up again. I got tired eyes, need a cup of blend. That's right. In the AM, that's my only friend. No light, just the sun coming up on the horizon. I lose track of time. Yeah, I move fast and climb. A new class divine. Yeah, true passion shines. And I'm through passing time. I choose stacking dimes. You snooze half the time while I move passing by. Uh. I work hard each and every day. I get lost in the words I say. I don't push pause, no, I push play. I won't stop till I make a change. I withdraw on the things I make. I turn flaws into flawless traits. I build tall, never cap in space. I won't stop till I hear him say.
in my veins I've been driving this train Gears in this lane There's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks Feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight Never stop, never changed All the squad here to play And I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say And I'm up again I got tired eyes Need a cup of blend That's right In the AM That's my only friend No light Just the sun Coming up on the horizon I lose track of time Yeah, I move fast and climb A new class divine Yeah, true passion shines And I'm through passing time I choose stacking dimes You snooze half the time While I move passing by I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause No, I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say veins i've been driving this train years in this lane there's no stop in this flame because i came to the game and i changed it to play how i like rearranged it to my own domain yeah i got what it takes made lots of mistakes taking shots skipping breaks feeling lost feeling great popping off singing straight never stop never changed all the squad here to play and i've got something to say yeah i work hard each and every day i get lost in the words i say i don't push pause no i push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in here live on Beef Tone. We got game number two on the night. It's the boys game. Bishop England versus Battery Creek, still the teams right here. The Palace on Possum Hill, also Joseph Strumman Jr., Jim Nasium. My name is Javon Livingston. Alongside me, we got Mr. Thomas Erdell on the color coming to you. How are you doing tonight, Thomas? I'm doing good, Javon. Yeah, you just mentioned uh, Palace on Possum Hill. You know, live right down the street on Possum Hill. So good. not a far drive at all for me. Glad to be here tonight. And, you know, I was talking to you before the game. Last year, you know, the only time I was able to see this Battery Creek boys team was at Buford High whenever they lost by 10 points in a you know highly contested game. So just really excited to see them again tonight. I know they've taken the next step so far this year, uh, having two more wins than they did all last year at this point in the season. So just excited to see them tonight. And it looks like we got a, a uniform violation to start off here. Apparently seems to be the situation with Ethan Cox, and I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, Ethan Cox is going to be off the floor. Gabe Leggett is on until they figure out uh, something with Ethan Cox. Yeah, not exactly sure what's going on there. Like you said, some kind of uniform violation to tell the, the ref is like pointing to his uniform. So. Yeah, it looked like in some uh, with the shorts. I think part of his undergarments might have been showing, and they were trying to say that they couldn't be shot. I remember he said something against Bridges, against the point guard for Bridges. 
um, during the Earl Campbell tournament, he pointed that out because he had some of his showing. So he was trying to stop that from being shown out. So I think uh, that might be the conversation here uh, on the floor about that, making sure none of the undergarments are shown here on the court. But, I mean, you can wear compression shorts, so I'm not understanding what the, the ruling is on that. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, and now you see Ref going over, looking at that stat sheet. But Coach Brown already having to send a bench player out there. As you mentioned, Gabe will get. Yeah, maybe they're going to talk it over. And maybe he's going to he's going to take his time and see if uh, Coach uh, Gravy here was going to you know be okay with it. Or, you know, him playing like that. So. So they're going to start off with the technical foul for Battery Creek. And we're not at the scorer's table. We don't have that audio. So it's going to start off with a technical foul early for Battery Creek. So Cox is still on the bench. But Kelvin Willis is now in. Gabe Leggett is off. And we're going to start with a technical foul. And Bishop England at the line to shoot here. Not sure exactly what's going on. but. Definitely not the way you want to start your battery creek before a second has even ticked off the clock. Already something has gone wrong. Not only does, do they get the technical foul and they're able to make one of their free throws, but they automatically start with possession. No jump ball, no nothing there. So just Coach Brown definitely can't be happy about that. Take a callous, uh, taking it casually. Going for the inbounds, nice steal by Williams. He's going. Nice little finger roll floating towards the baseline. No good, though. If, if he had been able to get that, that would have been very impressive. Yeah, but Bishop England gets theirs, and they're up by three here to start uh, the first quarter. Mathis gives it right back to Williams. That was Aiden Alexander on the basket for Bishop England. Cole almost wide open. Great hustle by Jack Vander Irby on the defense, getting the block. Yeah, we saw the Bishop England girls play really tough defense in the previous game, and so far, you know, boys following in their footsteps here to start this one early. Quick shooter foul there called on Mr. Jaberry Cole. Yeah, not a good start for this Creek team. As they've already had two missed layup attempts. Both good shot attempts, both were high percentage, but you're unable to get those to fall. And, you know, you start off with a technical foul, and then you get the quick shooting foul here. You know, not even a minute into this game, and you're already down four nothing. Mr. Puckhaber at the line sinks two of two. Good job by him to stand composed there, able to sink both, put his team up five. And just like we saw in the girls game, double teams and high press off the court forces the turnover. Bishop England playing with some fire defensively early. Battery Creek is going to get to that aggressive defensive style. They got the trap inside the corner, staying aggressive. Bishop England able to keep hold. Lines the room. Yeah, Bishop England staying poised, even as Battery Creek comes at them with, like you mentioned, that aggressive trap defense. But able to generate the turnover was Creek's defense. Matt is down there fighting for the rebound with his own team, and him and Willis going for that last one. Elijah Mathis hanging out at that three-point line. Yeah, See, they're trying to set up the three-point shot for him. Yeah, somebody's got to be there to clear it out. He pulls the three off the front of the rim. You called it. 
All right, Mr. Romo. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just got lucky with that one, but you know, whenever players like that's camping out there, you know, they're trying to get that shot. You know, I've watched a couple of your games that you've done with Tristan, and you know, seeing y'all talk about him on the Loco Hoops podcast, Justin Jarrett. That you know, he's their main scorer, so obviously they want to get him going. And like you said, you know, they were trying to get the ISO for him there. Looks like they're trying to do it here again. Thinks about it, drives in the lane, reverse lane. Great job there by Mathis. You know, you can tell he definitely wanted to shoot that three, but great decision to take it inside and get the first points of the game for three. Bishop, anyone trying to respond to that? Great score by Mathis there, just patient taking his time driving into the lane. Dida Creek looking to initiate their offense, definitely trying to run it through him. Almost got in some trouble there. I've been impressed uh, with the patience of Bishop England so far. Dida Creek staying on it, being aggressive like they always do. Yeah, both teams flying around to start this game. You see all the passes from Bishop England, but every time they pass, Battery Creek is right there to pick the man up. But usually what you see from teams is they're so anxious to try to shoot the ball that, you know, they wind up making a mistake trying to go to the racket. Bishop England staying patient. They get the two right there, Jack Vander Irving. Vander Irving, great pull-up jumper. And as you mentioned, you know, that patience paying dividends. Man, I'm not sure what happened right there with Mr. Cole right there. It was a nice pass from Willis. He saw he was in traffic, tried to jump it off to him. It was a little unorthodox, but it was there. And I feel like basketball IQ, I think he could have handled that one. For sure. Than. He definitely, that would have been a wide open layup almost if he had been able to hang on to that one. That was a great pass off. You know, right decision, right play. You always hear, you know, make the right basketball play. That definitely was. Mathis got an opportunity for a wide open three, upset. He wasn't able to knock it down. Yeah, I'm not sure who that foul was called on, but it looks like there's a whistle after the play. Got to pick up to two team fouls now. See, they're trying to play that aggressive defense yet again. Vander Irby, a nice pass down on the block and the layout. Andrew Pockaberry, the forward, the senior forward. Vanda Irby doing it all here in this first quarter. And a travel call on Ethan White. Yeah, and he was not happy with that one. Yeah, see him throw the ball to the ref there, but he's got to be more careful with the ball. Watch your feet. Let's see if Bishop England can capitalize on that mistake he made. See these high passes, but they're going up to get it. Job by Aiden Alexander, just driving in the lane there, getting a foul call. <laughs> he knocks down the first. Now, I'm sorry, this is a little bit of unorthodox professionalism. I see my friend, Mr. Devon Mack, in the chat. Sir, you have never seen me live stream a JV game. <laughs> <laughs> For you to walk in and to comment, is this JV of varsity? <laughs> this is varsity, big dog. Varsity, big dog. What everybody pays to see. <laughs> <laughs> Mathis, the floater. Great floater by Mathis there. He has all four of Battery Creek's points here in this first quarter. As I mentioned, you know, definitely trying to run the offense through him, and that was just a great bucket there. See Gabe Leggett out on the court now. He came in early, or unofficially came in, I should say, as he came in before the game had even started due to that miscommunication on the uniform violation, but he's actually in now playing official minutes. Didn't see that substitution until just now. And an error pass, Mathis racing it down, but 
can't completely outrun Mr. Ali Aiden Alexander. But it's still going to be Battery Creek ball. Great job by Mathis chasing that one down, influencing the play of Bishop England there. Able to get that one, you know, fall out of bounds and get the possession. He definitely impacted that play. Trying to get an inbounds to Leggett. Want to get him going. An excellent start. Did that first game versus Stahl. Knocked down five of those threes. See if he can get some more. Had the basket to send him to overtime against Branch, too. An opportunity wide open the block on defense. Going the other way. Bishop England turning around, slowing down the traffic call. Traffic picks up. Gabe Leggett holds on for dear life. Jump ball call. Yeah, and Barry Creek able to retain possession on that. And on that previous possession, now we saw Mathis drive to the, to the bucket to try to get in the paint and score. But he had Gabe Leggett open in that corner and just decided to take it himself. But as you mentioned, you know, able to knock down five threes against Stahl, you have to get him going. And Bishop England playing aggressive. And the travel call right there on Alexander. But you see, they had three players across half court <laughs> right there. They're staying aggressive on Battery Creek, taking a page out of their book, basically. Yeah, both teams want to play aggressive defense for sure. Nice hands right there by Rollins. The man who made the first point of the night on the technical foul. Williams, a nice one. Falls just short as he rolled off the glass. Comes up hobbling a little bit. You see him limping down the court. Yeah, and again there, you know, not, not to like criticize too much, but he had three-point shooters, uh, Leggett and Mathis there. It looked like they were open. You know, just got to find them the ball. I do a better job of having that court vision. By Coach, you know, let's say substitution by Coach Brown right there. Williams goes out. Uh, here comes Ethan White into the game. You see he couldn't even get into a squat on that last possession to, to defend. Yeah, I hope he's okay for sure. The three ball from Vanda Irving. Vanda Irving, I forgot his name for a second. I was you know, about to say that. I was like, oh, I don't want to say it wrong. But, you know, as I mentioned, you know, he's been doing it all here in this first quarter. He's got the assist, the two-pointer. You see the three there. Yeah, Vanda Irving putting in that work this first quarter. Kids again, thought about that one. Yeah, that quick trigger, that's one of those things. You know, I, I talked to Coach Brown, and you know, you know, Leggett coming up from JV last year. You see Mathis right there with the quick trigger. It doesn't go. It looks like he was hit on his finger a little bit as he comes, as he's shaking it as he goes back down the court. But that's one of those things. You see Rawlins, the quick three pulls the trigger. And that's one of those things. It's a confidence thing for Leggett. You know, you're coming up from JV, and you know, you play against Star, you got the kick ball right there by Leggett. But when you get on that varsity level, when you play against competitive varsity teams, they're, they're going to close out a lot faster. The hands are going to get up in your face. Um, and it's a lot more aggressive defense. And I think that's the thing that, you know, kind of gets away from them. Being able to shoot when you're wide open and being able to shoot when teams aren't that good is one thing. But being able to shoot when you get against tough competition is a whole nother level. And I think that's one of those things about, uh, you know, Leggett that they're going to have to coach through. Because we know he can knock them down. Just the question, can he make it against competition? And one of those couple of times there, quick enough trigger, um, that would have been definitely been a shot for him. Yeah, you saw the almost steal there by Battery Creek, but just unable to stay in bounds, keep that possession. So Bishop England will retain the ball here. Again, just continue to make good passes around the court. Yeah. Rebound cock, so he is in the game. Almost able to get the layup there, too, after getting that rebound, but it just rolls off. And two makeable layups there missed by Battery Creek. Nice pass up front from Rollins. Not able to get it to go down. Again, that was a makeable layup there as well. It was a great pass. The assist from Vander Irby to end the quarter. And Drew Pride for three. 
It's going to be the end of the first quarter. Bishop England, Battle of Bishops 17, Battery Creek 4. When we get back right here on a Beaufort Zone. Welcome back, everybody, into the second quarter. Battle of the Bishops with a 13-point lead. Make that 15 as the shot goes down. <laughs> Luckily for him, that one went down as he, he had missed that, you know. He had a wide-open three-point shooter in that corner, but elected to take it himself, and it paid off. See that Bishop England defense flying to the ball every time Barry Creek passes it. And a quick three off the side of the rim and out of bounds. Good decision by Aiden Alexander, number five there, just let that one go. Valley Creek trying to get the three ball go, and so far have been unable to land one as their only four points have come off two Elijah Mathis layups. He's had two open threes that he has been unable to knock down. Just got to get that three ball to fall if you're Valley Creek. I'm not saying, what else do you think in, in this game needs to change for Battery Creek if they're going to get back in this? We're going to start with this steal right here, going all the way, not able to get the bucket, but to the line, go Ethan White. Yeah, and Ethan White just charging down hard there, able to get the blocking call, you know. If he would have been able to get that one to go, that would have been a tough layup, but crucial free throws here for Battery Creek, trying to get back into this game here in the second quarter. And you know, I mentioned to you at the break, that first quarter was the Jack Van der Irby show. He did a little bit of everything with the assist, the three-point shooting, the buckets down low. So Battery Creek didn't have to do a, a better job here in this quarter and just throughout the game in general of containing him. This is the second, almost got his own rebound there, but going the other way. Uh, with it, that's Alexander Rollins passing around. Thought they had Evander Irby in the corner. Decides to go down baseline. Shot no good still. Rebound a wide open three. And they're going to wave it off. Said that foul was called on Puck Hobber there. Wide open three is White. No good. Rebound Cole going back up with it. Great job by Cole to be there to grab the rebound from his teammate White. Go back up with it. High percentage look there for White. Just unable to knock that down. Picking up his teammate there at the missed three pointer. You know. Valley Creek getting good looks from the three-point line, just still unable to connect. But we'd like to see them get Gabe Leggett going, as you mentioned earlier. Quick pass up front, going against Willis, and down it goes. Great passing there, and you see Valley Creek got caught on the other side of the court and just Bishop England had the advantage, able to get the right pass and get to Puck Hobber there. Cole, back to Williams, working their way around the three-point arc. They find Leggett, he's wide open. Splash for Leggett, and they finally are able to get him going as he knocks that one down. Huge three-pointer for the Dolphins. And the aggressive defense leading to an errant pass. 
giving them possession, trying to go two for one here. Actually, the rest are going to say it's Bishop England basketball still. Not exactly sure about yeah. that decision. Looks like he just threw that one out of bounds. Yeah, I'm going to say it's off the fingertips. And you, and you saw Mathis over there trying to argue his point. but Another high pass there, but able to get it. White comes up with the steal. He's got looking for his help. Take their time trying to set up some offense here. Yeah, good job not forcing anything there. You know, just taking their time, as you just mentioned. You know, it, whenever you're in need of points, you just can't rush it. Got to set up the perfect play here. And you saw the get calling for the ball, but he just lost it there. Yeah, and an easy steal going out of the way from Park Harbor on Ethan White in the corners. They tried to go down low in the post, not able to find it. Nice pass, Vander Irby. Up the side of the rim, and rebound, Mathis soaring into the sky, coming out of the way. They're going to call the foul, and on that offensive possession for Bishop England, a rare miss, Van Der Hervey's shot. Yeah. And I appreciate you, Miss Mika's, Mika's content. Check it in. I awarded the wrong points earlier. <laughs> Your only team when it was going to do 7 19 and I, on the foul shot. trying to drive there. Great defense from the Battle of Bishops. That was Mr. Tarrant there before they dive into the ground for the jump ball. And Willis trying to drive there. Leggett open at that three-point line, calling for the ball. But he, I guess he just didn't see him. As, you know, <laughs> once he got into the paint, he was just committed to drive to the basket. Luckily for Battle Creek, you know, the possession arrow points in their favor, and they're able to keep possession of the ball. Willis, long mid-range, no good. A rebound, White going right back up with it, no good as well. Another rebound this time, Willis, but gets it, well, holds on to it. And finally, the whistle call is going to be White ball. Battling Bishops, battling hard down in the paint, trying to get that possession. You know, if they had been able to get a hand on that, possession arrow favors them, so they would have been able to take that ball away from Battery Creek, however. I think able to stay on top of it. A little bit of a delay to start the play here. Not exactly sure what's going on, but play will start. And a tipped inbound pass. It's a steal for Bishop England. Yeah, not what you want on the inbounds pass. Yeah, before you even get a chance to try and run a play, just they're instantly there with the steal. But Creek able to get him back with this one. Yeah, Cole going, finds Mathis. Mathis almost setting up at the three. Dives in, kicks back out. And Leggett's going to do some of the same thing. Now trying to go for the one-on-one -on -one against Vander Irby. The mid-range is good. Great job by Mathis there. You know, you see the one-two passing, and, you know, but Adder Creek were down pretty big here to start the second quarter. Now just a seven-point lead for the battling Bishops. So great passing between Leggett and Mathis, and great job by Mathis. Bishop England picking up another foul there. They're fourth, one more, and they'll be in the bonus. Mathis, the deep three, is good. Mathis on fire as he splashes one from deep there. And you can tell he's hyped, absolutely putting this team on his back here in this first half. Yeah, and it was necessary for them to get back in this game. They were down by 15 to end the first on a three ball. 
at that. So in stylistic fashion, they're gonna wave that off. I believe that's gonna be a foul on Bishop England. That's gonna put Battery Creek. Uh, well, no. Battery Creek's first team foul. Oh, Battery Creek's first team yeah, foul. Yeah, playing disciplined defense, you know, which is surprising. We saw in the girls' game, you know, they were playing that double team defense. Both teams were Bishop England and. Battery Creek, and you know, it led to a lot of fouls as Vanda Irby splashes one from three there to respond to Mathis' three. But you know, we saw both teams playing aggressive defense get called for a lot of fouls. Battery Creek being able to play the aggressive defense pretty cleanly. Splash from Mathis, unbelievable the run he is on right now. And Coach Brown gonna call the timeout. Yeah, Mathis answering right back, trying to keep Vanda Irby. <laughs> In check, matching them point for point right there. Got a matchup of two stars going on right now. And while we got a break, I want to thank everybody for tuning in here on Buford Zone. If you're enjoying our coverage here tonight, you can always text Buford to 801-801 and help support our coverage of local high school sports. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that offers all of our coverage to the local high, public high schools in the area free of charge. And we'd like to teach students about sports broadcasting as well. So all your donations will be greatly supported, uh, appreciated, especially once we head into the playoffs as well. We start hitting some of those road games, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so appreciate you. Buford to 801801. Please keep the donations coming so we get to see great games like this one that's unfolding right here. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a 15-point lead at the end of the first. Now down to only four right now. Battle Creek still hasn't been able to take the lead, but a way to cut it to make it back to be in the game. Vander Irby. Splash from Vander Irby. And him and Mathis just going three for three right now. So let's see what Mathis has to respond. Let's get a heat check. We got to get a heat check. I <laughs> know, <laughs> oh, man. I want to keep see him keep it going. It makes it more entertaining. Hey, it was almost. They closed out real fast on Mathis. They got to know he's going to pull it. And he won't get a chance there as the foul called. Looks like it will be the second team foul on Battery Creek. Bishop England still just one to give there in the bonus. That would be huge for Battery Creek you know, if they're able to draw into the bonus. Down seven here. Van Derby. Surprisingly, not pulling that one from three. Well, they've been doing what they've been doing a good job all night of pass, passing the ball. Battery Creeks, obviously, you know, with that aggressive defense. Bishop England making the nice extra pass. Three pointer from the corner. No good from Alexander. Yeah, Alexander, a good look. Just unable to knock that one down. Bounces off the top, goes out of bounds. Battery Creek with the chance to do something here. You know, they can draw a foul and potentially get an and one. That would be huge here for Coach Brown's team. And a quick three from Leggett. You don't see that too often. And off the Marcus Cole fights for it, loses the battle to Rollins, Bishop England ball. Yeah, great Vander. release from Leggett. Just a little bit short there, unable to get it. He's one of two from three. That was only just his second shot attempt. And yeah, the travel call of Lang Tehran, and I think we all saw that coming. He tried to go across country, tried to take Route 66 <laughs> just now. I don't know where he, to where he thought he was going, but. Yeah, I just got a little too happy with that one, trying to dribble the ball there. But see what Elijah Mathis has in store. See him talking to Coach Brown. You know, with no shot clock in high school, you know, he's able to take that time. So he's able to get to the basket there. But, you know, in college, obviously, you know, you communicate with your coach. But nothing like we saw there, you know. He had a whole conversation with him there on the sideline because of the rule in high school, you know, there is no shot clock. Yeah, you still got to get across that half. You still got to get across half court, though. Rebound battery creek. Mathis thought about taking the three, finds the nice extra man. I don't know what White was Waiting on him, wide open. Unbelievable. I don't know why he did not shoot that. And, Co and it turned into another two on the other end for Bishop England. And uh, Coach Brown is the end of the quarter half. He is definitely going to have a conversation 
with White about that one. He's going to be livid about that in the locker room. I don't even have to go in there <laughs> to know that that's going to happen. Missed chance for them there, but still in this game due to the three-point shooting ability of Elijah Mathis. Yeah, they, they, him and Vander Erby shot it out there for a second, trading threes back and forth. Um, so, But, yeah, definitely missed opportunities. You had him go, Mathis, go ahead and get the, the – the lay up there on the side and then to come right back and just dump it right back into Ethan White. And he just, I guess he thought the block was coming maybe and just kind of ducked out the way. I'm not sure. Um, but it's halftime, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and we'll be right on back. Bishop England 29, Battery Creek 22.
Friday here live on at Utah. We got the start of the second half. It was once a 15 point lead, got down to four, and now back up to seven before the end of the half. Still, Bishop England all the way here at Battery Creek looking to make a comeback trail. What do you got for us in the second half, Gums? So, you, you know, as you mentioned in that first half, down 15, able to come back to now we see just a seven point game due to the shooting of Elijah Mathis, able to just go crazy from three there. That's the story for Creek, and you know, he had just had the ball in his hands, pass it out there. The story for Bishop England has, has been Van de Irvey, as him and Mathis were going three ball for three ball. And you know, right out of the gate here in this half, you saw Battery Creek get called for the foul. So, you know, they, they played a clean first half, but, you know, getting called for one right away might not bode well since they're, you know, do their aggressive style they play on defense, but we'll have to wait and see. And Vander Irby gets one already, knocking down the first points uh, of the second half, and then immediately a timeout coached by Coach Brian Grevin. Yeah, instantly, you know, they're trying to put the ball in the hands of Vander Irby after the scorching hot first half he had for the Bishop England battling bishops there. And, you know, Coach Brown calling that timeout. He should be very disappointed, you know. At the end of that first half, Battery Creek, we're headed down the lane. You saw Mathis dump it off to White. He just hesitated, just took too long to get that shot off. And it led to a, not only a miss, but Bishop England were able to capitalize on that miss and take it down right as halftime expired and score. So Battery Creek, you know, down nine here. However, they should be down much less. Look for them to try to get Mathis going against. He gave Leggett not out there. He's one of two from three, but trying to get the ball to White a little bit more as well. See him open over there in the corner. I mean, Willis, look, what looked like a nice touch at the rim. A little bit too much as that rolls around and off the other side. Yeah, that was just unfortunate for him. That, you know, that was a good look. Good pass inside, but unable to get the ball to him. Or unable to score the ball, excuse me. They were able to get the ball to him, but he just was not able to get that one to fall. And once again, the extra pass this time. Falls short of the rim, but back up and in for Bishop England and Andrew Puckham. Yeah, great job by him grabbing the rebound, going back up with it. And that one you know, just kind of fell right to him, hit that part of the rim underneath where you know, it just falls right back to the closest player, and he happened to be the closest player there. Another missed opportunity close at the rim for the Dolphins. And that one's gonna be called on Mr. Cole. Good job by Bishop Aitman just driving in, drawing the foul already. Battery Creek second of this quarter, not even two minutes in. You know, already in foul trouble a little bit here. Just played a clean first half, just had to get back to it. Continue to Obviously not a good start for them there. See, that they definitely want to be aggressive with that man there, Vander Irvy. See, Mathis guarding him. That's their two, the two best players so far tonight on the court going at each other. That looks like what is an accidental deflection there from uh, <laughs> for Mathis as he was looking to use almost falling down trying to chase down Vander Irvy. Goes right off his arm. Yeah, like you said, it may have been accidental, but it worked out in the end as Battery Creek ends up with possession. A nice extra pass to Willis for Mathis. Mathis doing it all here tonight for this Dolphins team, driving inside. You know, thought he was going to try and take that one to the rim, but finds the pass. And Willis able to get that one to go. Great vision from Mathis. The drive and the lay. Puck Hover, you know what I'm saying? I see Van der Hurry scoring all these points. You know, it's my turn to score. And, you know, that's two baskets for him here in this third quarter. Travel called on Mathis there. Gonna do too much. He's been the focal point of this Battery Creek Dolphins offense here tonight. Defense 
offense from Battery Creek. But once again, Bishop England finding the extra pass now on the foul called on Matthews. You see him come swatting in there. Yeah, and Battery Creek, you know, we've highlighted multiple times tonight, trying to play that aggressive press defense up the court. But whenever you do that, you, know, you leave guys in situations like that down the court where, you know, they're going to find the open man. And then the guy that's down there by himself is just going to try and have to, you know, hack at them essentially and hope he hits the ball to stop them from scoring. And that time, you know, got him on the arm and the shooting foul called. You know, it goes both ways, you know. Whenever it works, it works. But whenever it doesn't, you find yourself caught in situations like that where, you know, man, it's a two-on-one situation. He just has to do what he can to try and prevent the shot. And unfortunately for him, he got the foul. Well, it wasn't an and one, so he only gave up one point instead of two, so that works. Great transition defense from Battery Creek. And he got the foul. Andrew Crowd. As you mentioned, great defense there. Bishop England trying to come up the court pretty fast in transition. Battery Creek just able to hold their own and get the foul. Mathis thought about shooting that one. And the three, rolling up the top, back up by Willis, no good, gets his own rebound. He doesn't get the second attempt to go, but a rebound, Ethan White. Willis trying to find some of them, swinging it around the arc there on the far side. Good job by Battery Creek, you know, staying tough, continuing to get those offensive rebounds. Got to pay it off here with a basket. Mathis jumps it down the top to get what he's been looking for. Again, great court vision by Mathis and, you know, rewarding your offense by finishing at the rim. You know, you just can't afford to get all those offensive rebounds and not score. Not a good look, but for, for them, you know, they were able to finish. Great job by them sticking with it. Or some Bishop England into some passes, but they find Pride. Does the same thing Battery Creek did at the end of the quarter. No points that time. And it looked like Pride was trying to break up a pass on Willis there. To get, <laughs> this is, a, is that a, a pass interference or a holding call <laughs> on Pride right there? You see, kind of wrapped one arm around the hip and then used the other arm to go for the ball. Yeah, and that one, yeah, he gets checked out immediately after committing that foul. He's got to play DB. He's got to <laughs> play DB for Bishop England <laughs> in football season. He's got to. There's yeah, no way. That's the first foul of the quarter for Bishop England. They've been playing pretty disciplined defense up to that point, but as you mentioned, you know, just grabbing him by the waist and then turning, just trying to not let him go by. Didn't want that fast break transition. See Coach Brown talking to Mathis, his main scorer tonight. Mr. Man, Mr. Williams at the line, but yeah, talking to talking to Mathis, and you know that's a that's his guy. You know what I'm saying? You see why he was in some of the, the preseason, you know, hoop, hoop tournaments and, you know, scouting tournaments and things like that because he does, you know, have some talent and, you know, he's the guy he wants to keep going. And you can tell from the plays he's made tonight, he's definitely the leading scorer and just makes some smart plays and those assists down in traffic, man. Williams trying to go two of two from the line. And he does. And during those free throws, Brown, uh, Ethan White, came out for Gabe Leggett, Coach Brown making that substitution. Wow, Williams is off the line. Gabe Leggett almost with the steal. I don't know if the was waiting at the three, but they find Rollins, and in and out it goes. I was getting ready to say splash, but as he <laughs> makes that one there, but you know, yeah. like you said, in and out. Yeah, Willis, you see Willis uh, grimacing to going up for that rebound. It was yanked out, and it looked like he might have came down with it, but Something's wrong with his hand. You see he has the tape on it. And nice, nice attempt by Cox there, but it just falls short. The math is on the defense and the transition. Yeah, great defense there. It looked like they would have had the easy 
layup, but Mathis able to reach his arm out there and get a hand on it. And once again, that pass was to Mr. Tarrant. And yeah, Tarrant just on. could not hold on to that one there. Looks like they were on their way to moving the ball well once again on offense, but still a 10-point game. See what Bally Creek can do here. See them get the ball in the hands of their playmaker, Mathis. Oh, did that not give points to Battery Creek? I apologize about that. And the three ball. Splash for Battery Creek there. The second I mentioned, you know, 10 point game, they cut it to seven. Good job. Just working, finding the right pass, able to knock down the open three. Try to answer back right there with Aiden Alexander shot, no good. Yeah, he Matthews. saw Vanda Hervey in and out for Mathis there. He saw Vanda Hervey, you know, answer Mathis earlier and was trying to do that himself. Good save from Vanda Hervey, almost went across yeah. the line there. Yeah, and they tried to get him on the inside there, the tip in and Vanda Hervey. Unbelievable play, just throwing it up to him there. And, you know, kind of like an alley-oop layup play there. Yeah, it reminds me of the play that they did a lot last year. Uh, well, well, not Battle Creek, but Well Branch trying to get the ball to K.J. Chisholm. They used to do that a lot. They, they could tell he has that leap advantage on the court. They would just throw it up to him off the inbounds pass and let him either dunk it or lay it in high up in the air. If it works, it works. Creek retaining possession of the basketball here. See who they try and get the ball to. Down nine now. Cox from the range won't go. Willis fighting for the rebound. Looks like he's scared to use that left hand. In the yeah, and, and Cox looked a little hesitant on that shot. That he saw him kind of like pump fake a bit and then step into it. It looked kind of awkward. So not really confident in that shot, it looked like, but I'm not exactly sure. Williams playing aggressive. Looked like the ankle might be a little bit okay now. He's had some time to rest. Legant comes up with the steal, pushing all the way. Spin move in the lane. Runs into traffic. Finds Willis, the two. Way to go. Great play by Gabe Legant there. Able to get the steal, push it down the court, and then you know, thought about taking himself. So thought with that spin move he might go for the layup, but able to just dump it off to Willis there underneath. And that's just selfless basketball right there. Great play by Leggett. Returning Bishop England to the seven point lead they had just a few moments ago. You know, Battery Creek have not led at all in this game, but they still have played very well throughout, still looking for their first lead. See if they can close the quarter strong. They're unable to in the second, see if they can in the third. Finds Vander Irby. Vander Irby, the mid range shot. Won't go. Rebound Willis. Mathis the end. No good. Willis the rebound. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Your score Bishop England, 40. Battery Creek 33 when we return. Fourth quarter of action right here on Buford Tone.
Welcome back, everybody, right here on Beef is On Fourth Quarter Action. We got a two point, I mean, a seven point game. That was a two point layup to make it five. That's where I was going with that. Wasn't expecting that <laughs> quick of a score right here to start off the fourth quarter. You ended up in the right destination, so that's all that matters. <laughs> Battery Creek feeling the urgency. It's the, the final quarter. It got to make everything count if they want to close this gap right here. Yeah, and they played very, very well throughout this game. You know, we highlighted at the start of the half as Cook Hauber able to make it once again that seven-point game. But, you know, we mentioned coming into the half, you know, down by 15 at one point and able to, you know, get it back to within manageable, but they still haven't been able to overcome it. this seven-point hump. You know, they get it to seven. You cut it down to five there, but then Bishop England able to get it back to seven. And, and on occasions, you know, they've gotten it to seven, and Bishop England will hit a three to make it to ten. So they just have to find a way to get over the hump in this fourth quarter. And now Batter Creek taking their time, passing it around. Like they're not down by seven, but they're being patient, trying to take a different approach. Yeah, and they had an open three-point shooter in the corner there. Yeah. Ethan Cox was there, but just didn't see him. Yeah, Coach Brown, to avoid the travel call, decided to call a timeout. A uh, smart move by him. Yeah, for sure. They definitely need this possession. You know, as you highlighted just a few moments ago, have not been able to overcome this time. They need points. Points here would go a long way. And then, you know, get a defensive stop. So, Coach Brown, definitely great time out there avoiding that travel call. Do not want to let Bishop England get more opportunities to increase this lead. And don't forget, you're more than welcome to join our crew right here on the Beaufort Zone. If you're a student in the Beaufort County High School area and you want to learn about sports broadcasting, you want to do some color, some play-by-play, -play, you want to work some graphics, you're more than welcome to, to meet Thursdays at the Beaufort Digital Corridor downtown. Beaufort on Carteret Street. See what Coach Brown has dialed up here out of the timeout. Definitely need a bucket on this possession. These quick passes. Taking their time, trying to find it around the arc. Gabe Leggett gets tripped up. And it's going to be on Mr. Tarrant. And he's going to get subbed out. And I'm, you know, I haven't seen too many positive plays for him tonight. I'm not going to. Say anything about it, uh, about the skill set. Could it be just the off night, but so far, get a travel call, you get a foul there, and then you got the. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes runners. it's just not your night. So, the get misses that three pointer, now one of three. Surprised he's only taken three, huh? Recognize, you mentioned he's yeah. usually a high volume guy with those shots. Alexander every cross court to Rollins. One more bounce pass to Alexander. And Alexander tried to get it back to Rollins, but Williams says, thank you, I'll take that one. Extra pass to Willis will work, though. Great handles from Williams there, finding Willis, able to cut it to a five-point lead. Bishop England were able to score quickly to get it back to seven. Last time, see if they can here. They find Vander Irby in a full timeout. Who else but Vander <laughs> Irby? He's been the go-to guy for Bishop England tonight. Obviously, they've had a lot of scores, but him being the top one, able to get it back to a seven-point lead. And, you know, as we were saying, every time Valley Creek cuts into it, they just increase it to right back to what it was before, it seems like. Yeah, that, that's pretty much been the situation. But you know what they do? They get it down to Vander Irby. But don't worry about it. We'll talk about it. We'll break it down on the Local Hoops Report podcast Thursday, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 10 p.m. That means tonight, folks. Catch us on the Local Hoops Report podcast. Justin, Jarrett, Wes Kerr, and crew, the host of the Local Hoops Report podcast. You can wrap it all up, talk about all the local high school basketball scores, boys and girls there. You never know who's going to be checking in, post-game interviews, you name it from coaches and players all on the Local Hoops Report podcast on their Facebook. You don't want to miss it, folks. Great segue into that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I try, I try, you I said, try. We'll, we'll break it all down, and then what did that? That was textbook. <laughs> I try to get a little bit smoother with it, you know what I'm saying? 
Definitely a good one to talk about in both the girls and the boys here tonight. Uh, and a nice play from Mathis. Just unfortunately didn't end too well as he took that one down the baseline. And he went high almost to the <laughs> almost to the point you thought he was going to dunk that ball. And it just goes all the way out. But the travel call right there on Pride. Yeah, a rare miss for Mathis. But that one wasn't even really his fault. You know, he got the good shot. Just kind of went in and out on that high layup. Like you said, looked like he was going to dunk it. Settled for the layup. Bishop England called for the travel. Battery Creek had to capitalize on that mistake. Williams, one dribble in the floor, that doesn't get it to go. Cole tried to back in, but it's going to draw the offensive foul. Gabe Laquette's reaction almost kind of fall to the floor there. Couldn't believe that they got called for that offensive foul. But little possession change going back and forth, you know. Mathis misses, Bishop England get it, then commit to travel, and then. Bishop England get it right back on the foul call. And on the drive, try to check Willis one on one. A great defense gets the block. Going the other way, finds Mathis. Mathis finds Leggett. He pulls. Splash for Gabe Leggett. Now just a four point game for Battery Creek. And that was a great pass by Mathis, finding him in that corner. I'm excited that this game is coming down to this point right here. This would be a great win uh, for either team. Bishop England top 10 ranked in 2A right now. Only got one loss on their season. Vander Irby from three, no good. But yeah, they only got one loss, so to get a win against the decent Battery Creek team, that's a 3A school, will be a great win for them. And then vice versa, Battery Creek, this would be a great resiliency win when you're playing a top ranked team and Bishop England in 2A, but you were down for pretty much the whole game, and do you have what it takes to fight back and to win and not drop your head if you haven't been winning all game? You know what I'm saying? So for both teams from the standpoint, whoever wins this game, uh, I think it'll be a great quality win for both of them as Coach Brown calls a timeout. Yeah, Will is able to get the basket there, but see him come up limping, grabbing at his leg there, so I hope he's okay. Cutting it to once again a four point lead. But on that last possession for Bishop England, obviously, you know, so we saw the great basket by Willis there. But Van der Irvey, after he missed that three pointer, he immediately went and got his rebound. So great hustle from him to you know, keep that play alive, that possession. And Bishop England were able to get points off of it. Yeah, and they just keep going. They keep trading back. And four points is the closest it's been since it's gotten that far. It's been as much as 15 here in the game. Um, but Four points as close as people that, I mean, Battery Creek has gotten it since that point. And so they got to get over that hump right now with just under four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, able to get that bucket there to cut it to four, as you mentioned, but just got to continue to play great defense for the final 339 and just, you know, lock up on their side of the court defensively. They did great on that previous possession, or previous two possessions, excuse me. Uh, you know, getting that quick stop. So they just got to get another one. See if they stick with that aggressive style or they just kind of, looks like they are going to. You see three players come up. And on that previous possession for Bishop England, you know, you see Andrew Pride, the senior guard, number one, holding the ball. He was kind of telling Bishop England, you know, just slow it down a bit and not rush anything. But you see he turns the ball over there and the gym erupts. Yeah, that's a tough one. Pride is not understanding what's going on. And even me from this side, but we're not over there. So we can't <laughs> say anything. But this Battery Creek ball going the other way. They got an opportunity to bring it within two right now. Yeah, and he was talking to the ref as, you know, he came up the court. Not exactly sure what he saw there, as you mentioned. But it falls down there. Mathis is able to get the foul. And this place erupts. He's got the foul and the and one. Cole, who's been quiet all game. Now you need some points. Here comes Javari Cole to bring the game within one. If he makes this free throw, that'd be huge. Down by two here, could cut to one, as you just mentioned. What a great play. Great job by Coach Brown's team capitalizing on that turnover. Shout out to Miss Roberts, always joining us in the chat, and he knocks it down. And speaking of Miss Roberts, we are missing somebody here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Now 
Mathis called for that call foul. Him. They're gonna call, yeah, they're gonna call a hold on Mathis. Two fouls apiece for either team here in this fourth quarter. Final 317 coming down to the wire. Gotta stay disciplined, can't foul, and let your opponent get in the bonus in a game as close as this. Yeah, they toss him way out front to Pride, chasing that one down, trying to be aggressive. Yeah, and Pride just gotta be better with the ball here as he turned it over last possession. See him towards the middle though. Should have made that same mistake, trying to drive on the baseline. Randy ever thought about pulling it right there from the charity stripe. Man, here comes the defensive champ from the bleachers. Definitely look for them to get the ball to Vander Irving. He's been their go-to guy all night long. You see him over there on that three-point line. Bishop England just moving the ball, trying to find that perfect shot. And unfortunately for Willis, he is called for the foul. You saw him with the hands up there, but unable to avoid that call. Yeah, very upset about that. They've been doing a good job playing playing defense right there. That was a, taking the time, and if there was a shot clock, they might have got a shot clock violation or force uh, Bishop England to take a bad shot on that possession. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And they drop down the first of two, Mr. Andrew Puckaber. I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, you know. And he misses the second, but he gets the rebound, gets in the hand of Mr. Vander Irving, which is dangerous, but they clear it out. Pride at the top of the key, standing on the logo. Tough play for Mathis there. He had the rebound in his hands, but just lost it. Could be a huge play if Bishop England go on to win this game. Bishop England just passing the ball around, trying to find the perfect shot as they continue to run time off the clock. And you see their coach calling the timeout there. See what he can draw up out of the timeout. Yeah, and it looked like Bishop England's uh, strategy uh, as of late has been to try to run off as much time before they can get the right playoff. And I think at this point, you still got to play basketball at this point. You know what I'm saying? You play basketball all the first half. You got yourself up to a 15-point lead. Yes, it's down close. It's down to four. It's now two now. But you got to keep playing. I don't think you're now with the, playing with the cushion that you had to try to run the time out right now. Because at this point, Battle Creek could hit a three at any moment. And, you know, you can be back in it or a two to tie. So... For sure, I definitely agree with that. You know, don't stop playing your style of basketball. Do what got you here. Give you get the ball to Van to Irvy, or uh, you know those playmakers, Puckover, like you mentioned. You know, just get them the ball and let them work. You can't play scared just because there's only two minutes to go and you have a, a slim lead. Do what got you here in the first place. And you know, if Battery Creek continues to foul as they did there, that was their fourth. You know, you can get into the bonus and go to line and shoot free throws. Yeah, they got another one there, that's four. They get it to Rollins, Rollins dribbles it down the baseline and around. Finds a man getting trapped in the corner and a turnover, bad pass from Aiden Alexander. Aiden Alexander, just unfortunate with that pass. And Battery Creek with a chance to at least tie this possession, so crucial for the Dolphins. See what they can do here. Mathis bringing the ball up to court. He's been so good tonight. Yeah, Ethan White out, Gabe Leggett on. Look out for him to hit a three. If they can find some room. If he could hit a three, this place would go absolutely crazy. Well, Mathis says, I'll shoot one, but that goes off the bottom of the backboard. Rebound Willis, he finds Cole. The layup and in. The first time since all right, not even the first quarter, I should say, because even then they went down 1-0 before there was even time off the clock. So for the first time all game. But they're called for the blocking foul there. That's going to put Bishop England in the bonus. Unfortunate for Creek there. First time all game that it's been tied, but could go away. He's able to make at least one of these free throws. Game tied up at 47. Puck Hopper able to hit one to give them the lead there. See if he can make two 
to make it a two-point game. Yeah, definitely be a better, better cushion if he does it that way versus doing it. Goes two and two from the line. And Coach Brown calling a timeout there. Wants to get a play drawn up, probably a smart decision. See him with a clipboard in his hand. We'll see who he decides to put the ball in the hands of. Most likely will be Mathis, but you never know. Look for Gabe Leggett to hit a three-pointer, as you mentioned. <laughs> uh, you know, hit that shot to send them to overtime against Well Branch. So, got a little bit of a clutch gene in him. Yeah, definitely so. Might get, might get another overtime game here and see if we get another double overtime, double overtime right out here tonight. And for Bishop England, you know, just got to stay disciplined, can't foul. You know, three, they're three fouls away from getting Barry Creek into the bonus, but you know, a lot can happen in, with a minute 14 left, so just got to stay disciplined. You know, you can get to three fouls pretty quick, playing, trying to play aggressive defense. So not saying, you know, don't play completely off the ball, but just don't want to make a mistake and put Barry Creek at the line. See Barry Creek trying to move pretty quick here. Yeah, Williams, he finds room. The floater, it's good. Williams, space in the lane, and he just goes up and gets it with that floater. Tie game once again with less than a minute to go. Yeah. What a finish this is coming down to. Yeah, and he's going to ask Pride to dribble over to him. And now Coach Gerby, he's going to call a timeout himself now as well. Both coaches exhausted him as we're getting down to the final moments. Unbelievable how Battery Creek has just been able to hang in this game. But, you know, as you mentioned just a few minutes ago, down the whole entire game. They started the game up with a technical foul. It went down one nothing off a free throw on, off that technical foul before the clock even started moving. So for them to just battle all the way back and tie the game twice here with less than a minute to go in this fourth quarter has been absolutely incredible, regardless of who wins this game. Bishop England back there, out there on the court. Yeah, he called, yeah, Coach Gervin called a full <laughs> timeout. They just did a quick little 15 second timeout back on the court. <laughs> he Coach Brown is going to take the whole thing. <laughs> he, he probably told him, just find Van der Irving. Find Van der Irving. That's all you need to do. <laughs> or Puckhopper. He's been able to get to the line as he's shown these past two possessions. And shown to be pretty clutch, too, knocking down the free throws. But you would, like I said, you know, you expect them to find Van der Irving. He's been a little bit quiet in this, this quarter. Here come but. the cheers. They find Puck Hubbard. They're defending him. He drives in the lane, rolls off Van Der Erby, the rebound back up and off. And then the little bit of fans that are here for Bishop England would have went crazy if that would have dropped inside of the bucket. Yeah, great job by him. You know, you see them get the missed shot there. And Battle Creek fans, you know, hear them start to cheer. But however, he comes out of nowhere and grabs that rebound. Able to knock down that first one. It would be huge if he could make both, forcing, you know, Battle Creek to have to score at least two to tie. Runs in and out. Bishop England gets it back. Gets it to Van der Erby. They're taking their time. They're passing it as they're up by one. See the reaction from Coach Brown. Disappointed with that foul there. Sixteen foul on Daddy Creek. Yeah, and in the bonus, Coach Brown upset. That was the time where you didn't need a foul. It's time to roll it down. Yeah, and Rollins with a chance to make it a three-point game. However, he'll miss the first. Gabe Leggett coming back in. See Ethan White head to the bench. Yeah, you see him swapping between White, White, and Leggett, and you can tell White's the defensive guy, Leggett's the offensive guy. Back to a two-point game, coming down to the wire. See Mathis. Until we get to switch sides there. These quick passes almost turned the ball over. Luckily yeah. for them, they did not. Great save by Willis. They get it out to Williams. Time rolling down. Battle Creek's going to need to get a shot here, and you're going to get a timeout by Coach Brown. 
And they're running the clock down a lot. You wonder if you know, they're trying to set up a game-winning three shot here. Yeah, I think they're, they were definitely trying to get the final shot uh, of the game versus, uh, you know, the Russell Westbrook theory, try to get a two for one. <laughs> <laughs> And these final moments with enough time on the clock, but I think they're going to try to go for the win or the tie here. So with overtime being an option, if they only get the tie. For sure. You'd be, and you'd be happy with the tie to go to overtime, the way you battled all game, you know. You just got to get your guys in the, the right mindset. And that's why he called that timeout, you know. If the three ball is there, they should definitely take it. And, you know, if you miss, obviously, you know, it sucks to lose, but <laughs> at least you had the chance to go and win it. You know, you put the ball in your hand, it's up to you. But even if they're able to tie, you know, you'll be pleased with that, the way your team has battled back. And, you know, you can try and go win it overtime. It'll just be interesting to see what he draws up here. Uh, I would imagine, you know, if they do shoot a three, it would be Leggett or Mathis. Willis not in the game currently. Oh, no, he is, excuse me. I thought for a second he might have been the guys was out. But, you know, if they do go with the two, Willis has been able, and Willis and Williams have been de good down low. And Willis has knocked down some threes as well. Step back to Mathis. Mathis. And the Valley Creek fans go crazy. Still got to play defense, though. Can't foul. No good. They get the rebound, and we got overtime. Battery Creek sends another game to overtime, folks. 51-51. Great mid-range jumper from a Mathis there. He's been putting the team on its back all night long, digging them out of that 15-point hole and now send them to overtime. You know, Coach Brown, I'm sure you told him that time out, we're going to put the ball in your hands. you got to go make a play, and he did. Great job on the defense, too. You know, you could not give up a foul there, and they did not. Well, we'll be back, start our overtime right after this. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We got overtime right here on a Buford's own. It's Battery Creek, Bishop England, as they win the tip off into the hands of Rollins. For Bishop England, you know, they've been up all game, had the lead all game, as you mentioned, in the fourth quarter. Do they have what it takes to battle back and go for this win here? Battery Creek have shown they can you know, get it to overtime and trying to finish it off here. And, what a game, you know, this is the first time since I've been calling games with you that I've witnessed an <laughs> overtime game. I watched, you know, you and Tristan cover that double OT thriller over at Whale Branch, but, you know, this is my first time, so I'm definitely excited to see this. Yeah, and one of those things that I, I learned that I didn't know before is that, you know, you keep the bonus, you know, the bonus resets every quarter, but when you go into overtime, that stays. And right as you mentioned that, the foul called, and that's huge for Bishop England because, you know, if they end up racking up fouls and just make their free throws, they can win this game. Aiden Alexander at the line, trying to give Bishop England the lead once again. Hear the Creek Band cheers, he misses that one. <laughs> You know, as you mentioned just a few moments ago, a lot of the Fish of England fans left after that girls game, but I guess, you know, they wish they would have stayed now. <laughs> you know, this epic finish we're going to come down to. Hey, man, some of them, it's a game, man. I just came to see my daughter, granddaughter, and <laughs> niece play some games here tonight. Able to see them get the win, but, you know, this boys game has been extremely exciting. As yeah. I mentioned, you know, my first ever overtime game. Yeah, two attempts there for Battery Creek. Nothing coming of it. Pride with the ball going the other way. Vander Irby in the corner. Tosses it cross court to Alexander. Gets it back up to Pride. Standing on the logo. 
Yeah, and Pride has been their primary ball handler all the second half. So they definitely want to get him the ball top of the key, try to initiate their offense. Van Derby. Three, no good. Rebound, Alexander once again gets it back out to Pride on the logo. Tosses it down inside. Puck Hopper trying to drive the block. No foul. Great block there, but unfortunately they're unable to secure it after that. And Aiden Alexander gives Bishop England a three-point lead. And not able to get the close shots at the bucket. Williams thinks about the three, decides to drop it off to Willis. Great pass inside. Great decision not to shoot that. You know, you miss. Bishop England could easily grab that rebound. Signed to pass it off to Willis there. He's been so good in the paint tonight. Yeah, and he looked over at Coach Brown, and Willis might be in some pain. And Coach Brown, you know what I'm saying, just kind of finished this play, and there he goes. He subs in Jabari Cole. And here comes Cole, who's able to hit the shot to tie it, see what he can do here, checking in for Willis, as you just mentioned. And the spin move, and it looks like he can do enough. <laughs> he spins and drops that one inside the bucket. Tied the game in the fourth, give him the lead in overtime. Good job by Cole there. And yeah, they get their first lead of the night, but they might lose it just that fast if they leave Alexander open. Can't leave him wide open like that underneath the basket. He's been taken over. He scored all Bishop England's points in this overtime so far. In the corner, White driving, tries to go for the mid-range. Alexander playing the defense. Cox getting the big body, knocks down his own man. Mathis for three. Bounces high off the rim. Rebound by who else but Van Der Erbe. Yeah, great rebound by Van Der Erbe. Just unfortunate miss for Mathis there. And a foul called against Battery Creek. Looks like it's going to be on White. And that's going to send Pride to the line. Andrew Pride, the senior guard. He's been, as I mentioned, you know, initiating most of the offense, finally getting a chance to score here. Yeah, and, and just to kind of, you know, take the lead just just a, just a little bit and get it back up to two. But, you know, Batter Creek's been keeping it close and waiting for them to fight back, and they finally get the lead back in overtime. And that's my thing. I, I, I say it every single game, especially when it comes to basketball. Getting it close, tying it up is one thing, but taking the lead is a whole other thing. And they've been able to take the lead so far, take the lead here in overtime. But now they've surrendered that. They've got to do a lot of work to get that back. Yeah, being in the bonus definitely hurt them. Uh, still just down two. Mathis with the ball, see what he can do here. Willis back in. They've been getting the ball to him down low a lot. Yeah, you know, they've been doing a lot of work with Willis down low, but don't be scared because Willis can, can make a three if they kick it out to him to try to find Cox, but long hands by Vander Irby. Swats it out of bounds, still Battery Creek ball. Good defense by Vander Irby swatting that one away. Luckily for Battery Creek, they're able to keep possession. It was a good idea by Mathis, but with Vander Irby lurking in that paint, you know, it can be tough to get those passes off. We saw it in the girls' game a lot. They were just using their size and length. And a five-second violation on Battery Creek. Huge mistake by the Dolphins there. State they cannot afford to make this late down by two. And the push called on Pride. You saw him try to push Williams there, and he gets called for the foul. <laughs> and you see the camera girl down there goes running over to everybody on the side. What <laughs> call was that? What does that mean? Why is everybody cheering, trying to figure out what's going on? Mathis with the ball in his hand, see what he can do. Shooters on the court. Less than a minute left to go. Mathis with the ball. Kicks to Williams, handed Leggett. Back to Mathis. Taking their time. It looks like they're trying to get the last play of the, of the overtime. And the bad pass, Leggett coughs it up. It's in the hands of Pride. Great defense by Willis chasing it down. And that's going to be Bishop England ball. So it was almost a fast break score there for the battling Bishops. They're battling it out here tonight. Yeah, <laughs> even though 
Even though Willis didn't end up with a turnover, a great job, you know, recovering quickly to get down there. Like you mentioned, that would have made it a four-point game and basically iced the game at that point, you know, unless you get a quick three and then a stop somehow. But just got to play solid defense on this possession and, you know, can't foul, but if you foul, you hope they only make one free throw to make it a three-point game. Only 25 and a half seconds to go here in OT. Such an exciting game we've been treated to tonight. Yeah, 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 definitely. They've been, keep, they've been keeping it close. And, you know, both of these guys have been exciting. Even though the girls' game was a blowout earlier, um, it wound up being a blowout in the second half. But in the first half, it was very competitive. It was like one of the highest scoring games, girls' games, that we've covered all season in the first half. And unfortunately, Battle Creek just couldn't keep the thunder rolling. Van Der Erbe taking the inbounds pass. Try and see if they get a give and go with him. Hasn't well, really been too active in the fourth in this overtime, but still making an impact on the game beyond the stat sheet. Yeah, and, and it'll be a great help for Battery Creek one point away. I mean, one team foul away for being in the bonus as well. So opportunity for them to kind of get some of these points. And it's still, it's Willis going Gotta the other way. Gotta take it slow. Gotta take it slow. Pass. They find Willis. Can't hold on to it. Steals it. <laughs> and they're fighting for it. He puts it up, doesn't get it to go. They get it back down to Cox. Cox puts it in. Cox able to tie it. Another double OT, perhaps. Bishop England trying to go fast. And another double overtime. Oh, my God. Battery Creek, what are you doing to the fans at home? <laughs> You're keeping them on their toes. And it looked like they might have lost that game. They had it down low, unable to score. Looked like they were just rushing that. And, you know, I was saying, got to slow it down there. Able to get it back out to Cox, and he just drives into the lane and ties it yet again, 57-57. And Bishop England has to be thinking, what is going on with this team? <laughs> Two times now, they had a last-second shot to send it to overtime. And There's they, just no quit in Coach Brown's team. Yeah, and they just keep they just keep fighting. Both teams fighting. You got the battle of bishops here. They've proven that they are capable of going to battle here. <laughs> well, I don't care what you bring to the party, whether it's a rook, a knight, whatever you want to call it. And then now you got you got the Dolphins in their second double overtime game of the season. And you gotta finish some of these games out because you're gonna wonder later on if all these double overtime games are they gonna add up to extra minutes played for your guys. Luckily, it's going into Christmas break, but, you know. <laughs> Definitely a factor when you get to region play. You know, the other night we were talking about the uh, Buford Battery Creek game that they had to play. You know, since they're in the same region, both in Class 3A, had to play each other twice. So, you know, it could come in uh, factor down the line, as you mentioned. We are in double overtime, folks, and if I didn't reset that clock, we'll change some graphics for you real quick, but I'll get that rolling in a second. We're gonna stop it soon enough. They double overtime here on a Buford zone. Battery Creek, as you mentioned, just one foul away from being into the bonus on their side offensively, with Bishop England already being so, you know, it could come down to who can make their free throws if they're fouled. And we got to set to three minutes and three minutes and 30 seconds. Whenever it gets to three minutes, we will start our clock right here at Buford Zone here in double overtime here on Buford Zone. Vander Irby, the deep three. You have two things you haven't seen all night. You see Hollins take a three, and then you see Vander Irby not only just take a three, but he took a, a deep three. And Bishop England, I guess their game plan is to try to get out of here by any means possible. <laughs> yeah, their coach. Not saying he's got to be, like, completely disappointed, but, you know, he's probably thinking, man, we had these guys 15. Yeah. Obviously, you know, basketball, 15 is not that much. You know, yeah. we always talk about basketball being a game of run. You game can go on a run. But, however, you know, to get to two overtimes, he's got to be thinking, man, what do we have to do to just get out of here with this victory? Especially being up by 15, <laughs> you want to go ahead and get back home. You don't want to stay here all night, especially on a school night. You know, basketball, they're usually already on the way home by now. Yeah, got to go back to Charleston, so 
you know, and I didn't realize they were that close. You know, I remember we covered one of their girls lacrosse games when they came to Beaver High last year, and I had no clue, never heard of them before. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was looking at their max pass, and like, oh, they're from Charleston. I didn't realize they were that close. Yeah, Bishop England, man, they're the, they're the powerhouse, man. They've always been good at athletics, man. And I, when I was in school, they had that incredible volleyball run. I don't know if they still got it or not, but they won, like, volleyball state championship like 10, 12 years in a row, man. Yeah, they're – Boys and girls basketball teams have definitely put on a show tonight. So props to them, their coaches, their athletic director, you know, building those programs. Huge free throws there for the battling bishops. And we are coming up on three minutes left inside of overtime. And we are going to start our clock. 59-57, Bishop England with the lead. Mathis pump faking at the three, looking to drive. Goes baseline, kicks it back out to Cox. And <laughs> Unreal. It looked like it was about to bounce out, and then it just ends up falling. Kind of like that last free throw the Bishop England shot. And once again, tied. Great pass by Mathis. He's been doing it all tonight. Just what an absolute playmaker for Coach Brown's Dolphins team. Chance again, Bishop England. Drive kick, a bad pass. Haven't seen too many of those tonight. And it's going to be Battery Bat Creek's ball. Bat court on Bishop England. It's a Battery Creek ball. Crowd hype about that one. Give and go to Mathis. Between him and Cole there. Still no 15 foul from Bishop England, and there he goes. And that's going to put Creek into bonus offensively. So huge for them. You know, obviously, you can knock the free throws down here, but if they get fouled again, you can, you know, increase that lead. It should they take the lead here if they're fouled. Yeah. And that's and that's big important. I, 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 that's funny. I just couldn't <laughs> It's funny that I did that in these final moments right here because I was just co co coaching Trinchston in our last meeting about when he has nothing to say, he just says, yeah, and just leaves, <laughs> it, flat, just leaves it flat at that on the broadcast, and I just did it just myself. But to add to your point, uh, this is big for Battery Cricket. I was just about to point out how clean uh, Bishop England has played um, to this point. Um, Battery Cricket's been at 14 fouls. Well, they, well Bishop England's been at 14 fouls for a minute and not to give up that fifth one until now has been good for them. But unfortunately, it's in a crucial moment, a double overtime. Yeah, uh, Battery Creek, I almost said Buford there. Battery Creek with the one point lead now, but just got to hold on, and, you know, hope that they get the ball back, you know, they get fouled so they can go back to the line. I don't even think that pass was from Vander Earth. He just hopped in there and took it. It's like, give me the ball, man. We got <laughs> to get it going, man. Yeah, and he hadn't scored in quite a while here in the fourth and both overtimes, but able to get the bucket there to regain the lead. Now they're up by one. The second I mentioned, you no, know, Creek being up by one. No foul called there or there. <laughs> Sending both guys to the, the floor. White. Splash <laughs> by White. Unbelievable to give Creek the two point lead. Just what they needed to get over the top and to get them going, but two points, man, that's nothing for Bishop England. They've had the lead all night. As soon as Battery Creek did get the lead, they took it right. Back, see what they can do now in the underhand late. Aiden Cox just continue, or Aiden Alexander, excuse me, there mixed up <laughs> the names of a Bishop England player and a Battle Creek player. But Alexander, they're able to get the layup to tie it. Just and you know, you were saying uh, White is more the defensive guy, but showed his offensive prowess there, knocking down that corner three. Yeah, which makes me kind of wonder a little bit why the coach wind up taking him out and the timeout from Coach Brown. Yeah, 31.1 here, you know. Not saying they necessarily are going to try and run it out, but just thinking, you know, they would try and run it out a little bit and get the ball in the hands of Mathis or White, who just knocked down that shot. One of their star playmakers. They've, you know, you've seen him go to Willis or Cox down low. Uh, Cole as well. Honestly, anybody on the team could score. We, we've seen that tonight. But, you know, just want to see them kind of 
not exactly sure that Coach Brown will do this, but just, you know, from me, uh, commentating this, you know, I'd like to see him kind of run the clock out a little bit, try and draw a foul, you know, because if you get the foul, you go to the line. But if they don't foul, you know, try and run it out, don't turn the ball over, and then try and either, you know, get a last second shot off to win the game. Yeah, and that's probably going to be the strategy if you can here, um, or, for, or force, you know, Bishop England to foul because that's the situation they're in. And that might be, you know, this is the time where I agree you can run the timeout because if you, if you sit here, you're going to force Bishop England to foul, and then they're going to send you to the line so that way you can make a shot because you'll also get a bonus at that point too as well. So. Yeah, the problem for them is just holding on to the ball because Bishop England has played really good defense. Obviously, you know, it's faded a little bit as the guys got a bit more fatigued, but still throughout this game, as you see Mathis drive there and lay it in. And that's what you want to see from your guy. Just go get it. Get out of my way. I'm going to score the ball. And that's Mathis. Pushing the battle and Bishop to take another timeout. See if they try and play for three overtimes or try and take the game winner. You know, you mentioned the start of overtime. Coach just wants to get out of here with the shot selections, but Battery Creek just not going away quietly here with the two point lead. And as you mentioned, a you know, great job by Mathis just going ISO, just get out of my way. And he takes it right to the rim. Got to imagine they'll try and draw up a play for Vander Irvey here. Got it, Creek gonna have to play clean defense here. And bounds the double catch. They find who else? Vanda Irby. Got it, Creek gonna have to go quick here. See Coach Brown motion him. Mathis is gonna try and take it himself, it looks like. White from the corner. It looks short. Cox puts it back up. Are they gonna say it's in? And they're gonna say it's in. Battery Creek wins with the walk off. Unbelievable oh finish! My God. Unbelievable! Coach Brown and the Dolphins do it again! Oh my God! The Bally Dolphins are king Creek. of double overtime! And they win in walk-off fashion. They're gonna count the bucket. Ethan Cox, the hero on the night. That is, um, I saw I, that. I, that's my first buzzer beater in double overtime right there. That is definitely exciting on the night. They're going to be happy. They're going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> great, great, absolutely phenomenal win for Coach Brown and the Dolphins, battling back from all the way down to win in double overtime yet again. Couldn't have asked for a better finish. What a game. What a night. I want to thank everybody for tuning in here on Buford Zone. My name is Javon Livingston. Alongside me has been Thomas Erdell. I've been yelling enough. My voice is kind of hurting right now. <laughs> and thanks for